now on Spotlight, coming to terms with destruction and loss. A teen who survived the earthquake in Haiti shares insight on the recent hurricane. Walking a mile in their shoes, the valuable takeaways from one unusual lesson. See how local high school students are now experiencing medical school firsthand. And getting the drop on science, how one teacher makes it so memorable. Welcome to this week's edition of Spotlight on Education. I'm Rick Blackwell. And I'm Claudia Shea. Our top story, South Florida dodges a bullet from Hurricane Matthew. But the storm left plenty of damage farther up the coast and off our coast. Hundreds of people heeded the warnings and went to Red Cross shelters, many of which are in district schools, including this one at West Boca High School. The school district of Palm Beach County once again helping the community we're happy the evacuations didn't last long. However, in nearby Haiti, shelter was a critical problem, especially for those living in the southwestern part of the island nation. Yeah, you know, that area in particular was devastated by the hurricane in terms of damage and loss of lives. For one local student, this disaster was the second to profoundly impact her friends and family. This Coast Guard video of Haiti's southwestern peninsula exposes the swath of death and devastation left in the wake of Hurricane Matthew. Hey, my name is Jasula Jinat. For Atlantic High School senior Jasula Jinat, these heart-wrenching images are personal. My mom is still in Haiti, my older brother, and I have cousins. Most of my family are still there, so you can imagine how I felt when I heard Haiti was going through something like that again. Fortunately, Jasula's mom and brother are fine. But once again, the nation as a whole is grappling with a humanitarian crisis. Hurricane Matthew's rains flooded villages, while fierce winds flattened homes and schools and blew the country back to a tragically familiar state of disaster. That, which followed the catastrophic 7.0 magnitude earthquake, which struck the island nation in 2010 and killed hundreds of thousands of people. Jasula fled to Florida after that earthquake and understands all too well the humanitarian crisis that once again is gripping her native homeland. When I heard about the hurricane and I, I understand the the amount of dead people that we had there. And I knew I had to do something as a leader. We can sit there and say, pray for Haiti when there is something that we can do. Jasula launched a donation drive, collecting canned goods, clothing, and other necessities. Her school, students, and the community all pitching in. And thankfully, I have churches involved, avid students are involved, the student government and Atlantic High School are involved in actually um, collecting things to bring to storage in, in Atlantic High School so we can send those things to Haiti. These supplies will be combined with donations from other relief organizations and will serve as a lifeline and reminder that the people of Haiti remain in the hearts of humanitarians, even the youngest among us. You know, Haiti is one of several nations in which children living in poverty receive financial support through UNICEF. A great deal of that financial support is raised by students here in Palm Beach County and across the nation. Student reporter Olivia McKinley shows us how the UNICEF club at Palm Beach Central High School is really taking part once again in Trick or Treat for UNICEF. Hi, Olivia. Hi, Rick and Claudia. Don't be surprised if you see a lot of boxes like these between now and Halloween. The UNICEF club here at Palm Beach Central and at schools across the district are taking part in Trick or Treat for UNICEF. UNICEF is the United Nations Children's Fund. It's a program that provides humanitarian services to children and mothers in developing countries. We have the resources here at Palm Beach Central and within our own community to help kids in need who don't have the resources, such as in places of uh, Ghana and Colombia, Honduras, Guatemala. Students are collecting donations from friends and family. Some will even carry the boxes when they go trick-or-treating and ask for a small cash donation rather than candy. Children helping children, that's what it's all about. So if you see one of these boxes, be sure to make a donation. We're seeing a lot of orange lately, and it's not just because of Halloween. That's right, orange is also a popular way to show support for Unity Day, October 19th, a day to end bullying. It's all part of a national campaign which asks, what are your true colors when it comes to bullying? Make it orange and make it end. Our district-wide bullying prevention activities are in line with the strategic theme, creating a positive and supportive school climate. 
Time now to tell you about a celebration of diversity at Calusa Elementary School in Boca Raton. Yeah, students spent the day learning about people with physical, mental, and emotional disabilities. From a distance, this looks like a simple game of charades. But at Calusa Elementary School in Boca Raton, this is an exercise in compassion. Yes, Will. Yeah, good job. Good job. These second graders recreate the experience of a hearing impaired person having to communicate without words. It's all about celebrating diversity on campus as part of Disability Awareness Month. This morning has been wonderful to be able to see all of the um, children and the students and all of our volunteers that are here helping our children and being kind and understanding and really getting to see what it's like living in someone else's shoes and seeing it through their eyes. In Ms. Cox's class, the fifth graders imagine life with a physical disability that would force them to have to write with their non-dominant hand. The children now have a better understanding of how people have to overcome challenges. It's so important for us to educate students and children and other human beings about how other people struggle from day to day. And this day is called Inclusion Day, with inclusion and Calusa spelled out in the name. This school has a large population of students with physical, mental, and emotional disabilities. That's why it was important that even kindergarten students were involved in this day. Teacher Kelsey McKeever read them a story about autism. People with autism may find big crowds or loud noises very frightening. And in this fourth grade classroom, the students participated in small group discussions about disabilities. So you guys brought up some good emotion. Later in the day, people with disabilities address the whole school. We think they're just everybody else. They're a normal kid. They're just a kid. It doesn't matter. Students are getting the message, and they have a better understanding about the importance of treating everyone with kindness and respect. He sees all these people laughing and pointing, and then, like, it's just not the right thing to do. Time now to salute students and staff in this week's Honor Roll. begin by honoring the district's teachers. October 5th was World Teacher Day, though just one day is set aside for this international recognition. We think our teachers deserve to be thanked every day for their contributions to our students, so thanks teachers. The Palm Beach County School District was awarded lots of greenbacks for its commitment to green schools. The district was one of just five in the nation to receive a $20,000 scholarship for sustainability from the U.S. Green Building Council Center for Green Schools. And kudos to students at Palm Springs Community Middle School. Avid students at the school created these pillows for members who live in group homes. Avid stands for Advancement via Individual Determination. And an impressive showing for Wellington High's debate team. Members earned top honors at the Palm Beach Catholic Forensic League 2016-17 championship season. Six Wellington debaters earned new or additional National Debate Association degrees. You know, in a matter of just weeks, voters will be asked to decide if schools will get more funding through a one penny sales surtax. The Education Network's Gary Whittem takes us inside one school that some say is beyond repair. Here at Addison Meisner Elementary School in Boca Raton, well, the oldest building here, the exterior, Staff here says looks great. You can see by the name plaque, the building's about 50 years old, and they say it's not the exterior that's the problem. It's everything pretty much on the inside of these walls. Oh my gosh, I don't think anybody can even do the first sentence. This is James Wade's second grade class at Addison Meisner Elementary School. The 14th day of second grade has arrived. His class goes on despite some struggles. It's a skill, life skill to be flexible and to, you know, be able to adjust. Making adjustments has become more of a regular occurrence than when he started at Addison Meisner over 35 years ago. Our toilet this year broke the uh, handle on it. I took the top off the toilet and I taught the kids how they can reach in and just pull the thing up and it would flush. Toilet issues, they're a regular occurrence. The staining caused by rusty water. We've had the toilets in this building especially overflow. Besides a new building to replace the oldest one, the other buildings have issues too. Some of the biggest, <laughs> fire alarm and lighting upgrades to improving the grounds overall. 
the cost for everything more than $20 million. The maintenance department is wonderful, but they can only do so much. We are on speed dial with them for work orders. On November 8th, Palm Beach County voters are going to decide if they want to support the schools with a one cent sales surtax. The kids, and I think that they would get a, uh, a better education if we could upgrade. Everyone here on the campus hopes that this old building will get torn down, a new one will go up, and also the rest of the grounds, well, they'll be updated also. At Addison Meisner Elementary School in Boca Raton, Gary Whittem, The Education Network. Boynton Beach High School students in the school's Medical Sciences Academy took a field trip that some say could actually inspire them for the rest of their lives. Well, they visited the medical school at Florida Atlantic University, and after their day on campus touring FAU's med school, many are now focused on life after high school. For one day, high school sophomores turned into college medical students. So we need to know things like that when we're going to be administering medication. 40 10th graders from the Boynton Beach High School Medical Sciences Academy took a field trip to Florida Atlantic University's med school in Boca Raton. If this is what I want, this is what I aspire to, it, it, it sort of gives you that incentive to say it's a life-changing instance and I hope that it drives them to keep their passion alive and decide that they want to be in the medical profession. Mark Goldstein is the senior director of FAU's College of Medicine Simulation Center. In this case, he showed the students what to do if a patient was having a heart attack. Shock delivered. Now we would start again. Dave, Dave, you with me? <coughs> Dave, you with me? My chest hurts. Oh, I bet you it does. <laughs> yes, the mannequins talk at FAU. In each room, mirror glass, where FAU med students play the part of patients. I can't hold my hand. I'm scared. They even respond to questions. Have you been on any medication? The Boynton Beach High School students learn from these real life and death scenarios. That very well could be me. One day as a doctor, standing over someone in a code blue situation, having to carry out CPR on somebody, so Having experience like that, I won't like freak out or anything when that day comes. Hopefully it doesn't, but you know, if it does, I'll be prepared. It's all about preparation inside this academy. Teacher William Parker has seen the program double in size. At Boynton Beach High School, they practice CPR and study anatomy on a 3D computer. Along with the field trip, these opportunities go a long way in ensuring postgraduate success. The light switch is starting to turn on for them, which is uh, exciting for us. Cool. And I think a lot of that has to do with being on a college campus like this and the medical students coming over and teaching them and the FAU College of Medicine professors coming over and engaging with them. FAU medical students will be hosting several Palm Beach County schools in the weeks to come. It's all part of the school's Health Careers Outreach Program. So many medical shows on TV that people have this really, you know, glamorous picture of what it is to be a doctor or like you're constantly saving someone's life. And this kind of gives us a chance to show them sort of the day to day of being a doctor. And after a closer look at the medical profession, many students left inspired. I definitely feel like I could be going to the medical field after today. <laughs> today was about public practice. Someday, these students may go into private practice. The 2016 Showcase of Schools held at the South Florida Fairgrounds. It's the perfect time and place where schools from around the district can highlight their various choice and career options, and there are many. It's always such a great opportunity for students and families to talk to representatives from the schools throughout the district before actually applying to choice and career programs for the 2017-18 school year. This week we're recognizing School Lunch Week, and this year students are eager to get their lunch at Royal Palm Beach High School. And you know, this is actually the fourth high school to get a newly designed food court instead of a typical cafeteria, and the kids are loving it. Four years ago, the district started redesigning the way high school students receive and perceive their meals. The new focus is enticing kids to enjoy a nutritious lunch that offers lots of choices. It's no coincidence that the new look resembles a mall food court. The idea was really that instead of having just a few menu items every day, there's actually 35 different menu items served here consistently every single day. I don't know, it's more fun. It's not like the same boring food every single day. It's like one day you can choose 
deli, you can have like a sandwich, or one day you can go have pizza or whatever. The new look also comes with a takeout window for those who prefer to dine outside in the courtyard. It all seems to be working. The school has seen a big increase in the number of lunches it now serves every single day. You know, your children may also be eating more fresh fruits and vegetables at schools. Yes, you heard that correctly. That's right. The federally assisted program provides free veggies and fresh fruit to participating elementary schools. The goal, to improve the eating habits and diets of our youngsters. The program works to provide healthier food choices and expand the variety of fresh produce children are exposed to. This year, six more schools have joined the program, bringing the total number to 19. You know, student health, of course, is not limited to just their diets. Every step is also taken to ensure that your children have a safe ride on the school bus every day. And this is National School Bus Safety Week. It's a good time to remind you that experts say school buses are one of the safest methods of ground transportation. In fact, eight times safer than riding in a passenger vehicle. Much more ahead right here on Spotlight. A Palm Beach County first grader teaches all about compassion. She's doing everything she can to help people with breast cancer. And a major victory for the Jupiter High School volleyball team. And it has nothing to do with their actions on the court. How they're helping out their number one fan. Stay with us. Too many of our kids miss too many days out of school. When they miss school, they miss out. It doesn't matter whether the absences are excused or unexcused. Low attendance can lead to low performance, from preschool to high school. Showing up is the first step for success. Make sure your kids go to school every day, on time, all day. Attendance matters. You need to go to grow. Time now for Good Sports right here on Spotlight on Education. I'm at Jupiter High School, a big volleyball game tonight. Got the Jupiter Warriors taking on the Benjamin Buccaneers, but truly more than just the volleyball action tonight, they're raising money for a wonderful cause. When someone in the Jupiter High School athletic family is dealing with adversity, this group comes together. Mike Brown is a fixture at all Jupiter High volleyball games. His iPhone is focused on number eight, his daughter Jaden, one of the top players in Palm Beach County. Jaden has verbally committed to play volleyball next year at the University of South Florida. That's the joy in Mike's life. The pain is his fight with esophageal cancer. To help Mike in that fight, fans at Jupiter High School wore blue shirts and ribbons to this game against Benjamin. The school raised $6,000 to help the Brown family through the sale of refreshments, a silent auction, and a donation drive. Mike is currently undergoing chemotherapy treatments. He inspires his daughter and the entire Warrior family. Alara Park is one colorful young lady. I am pink from head to toe. This Seminole Trails Elementary School first grader may be pretty in pink, but she has a heart of gold. I'm proud of myself because, because I've been doing so much. Alara is walking, doing a lot of dancing, and raising money to fight breast cancer. She's with her mom, Rosie, at the annual American Cancer Society's Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk in downtown West Palm Beach. It is inspiring. It's always inspiring. This is fantastic. And then to pass it on to Alara and she understands how important this cause is, it's fantastic. Also fantastic, the entire Seminole Trails Elementary School team. They are family. It's not how there's love and support that I don't think people realize that with the school district, it's not just school, it's not just teachers, it's love and support. They showed their support by donating $1,700 to Team Betty's. Betty is Alara's great-grandmother who died of breast cancer. It's just a good way to honor her and love her. Three, two, one. The Making Strides Walk of Palm Beach has officially begun. 
There was a lot of love on this course along the Intracoastal. Family and friends formed teams to honor cancer survivors like Cheryl Lally. I love it, you guys are like in the parade. <laughs> Thank you. Not everyone had pink hair, pink boas, or pink hats, but these walkers share a common goal to wipe out breast cancer. To be out there and to see everyone working to fight breast cancer, it really was inspirational. So many kids coming together, really a nice sight. Okay, time now to talk about learning is fun. Under the slogan, full steam ahead, Polo Park Middle School is working to roll out its maker space in the school's library media center. Thanks to a grant from the Jacobs Family Foundation of Wellington, students enrolled in the STEM class will explore technology in an informal, alternative setting. This is just another step toward Polo Park's new IT magnet program, which starts next year. We'd also like to thank the Jacobs Family Foundation for another generous donation. The foundation donated 335 books to New Horizons Elementary School. All of the books are written in Spanish and will benefit the school's International Spanish Academy. Pre-K students at Wellington Elementary School are using mirrors to fine-tune their speech skills. Speech pathologist Cheryl Payne is behind this innovative method of showing students what sounds look like. Students at Palm Beach Public had a great time turning their principal into a human ice cream sundae. The top Booster-a-thon fundraiser from each class was selected to have fun with all the toppings. Money raised will be used to modernize the school's library. That principal is a very <laughs> good sport. Yeah. Okay, much more ahead for you right here on Spotlight, including a look at what's coming up around our community. And a Palm Beach County School District teacher named Best in the State. We're going to tell you what makes Tracy Smith such a special teacher. A penny! You see this penny? My mom told me not to pick it up. Because it's sturdy and it's just a penny. But just a penny can add up when it's combined with a whole bunch of other pennies. Don't tell my mom, but I pick up pennies whenever I can, and then I wash my hands. I find them on the sidewalk, the washing machine, between my mom's seats. I find lots of them in between my mom's car seats. This November, I'm not the only kid that's counting on a penny. The penny sales tax will give district schools $1.35 billion to improve technology in our schools. It would replace old school buses. A lot of our schools will get things fixed that need fixing, like roofs and air conditioning units. And we'll be able to make our schools safer with security enhancements. That sounds pretty awesome to me. But I'm not a grown up, and I can't vote. But you're a grown up, and you can vote. A penny might not seem like much, but it means a whole lot to us. Think about it. All that spare change can add up. One county, one penny. A penny counts. Election day is November 8th. Welcome back to Spotlight. A Bach Middle School of the Arts teacher really brings her students science with a smile. Tracy Smith wants her students to have fun while learning. Tracy also said she wants to turn them into science nerds. Now, I had a chance to visit Tracy's classroom to see why she recently won the Presidential Award for Excellence. Mrs. Smith went to Washington. Bach Middle School teacher Tracy Smith visited the White House recently to receive a Presidential Award for Excellence in Mathematics and Science Teaching. It's very exciting. I am so humbled by it because I know what kind of science education is going around in this county and it's unbelievable. And Mrs. Smith is an unbelievable teacher. You need to know the steps. You need to understand the process of experimentation. It's her belief in the potential of her students. So this is going to be your basket apparatus. Yeah. And the power of education that fuels her passion for teaching. This is the age group that needs a really good role model, not only as a scientist, but just in general. And I just feel like that's, that's my opportunity. This commitment to her kids, the reason why she was named top middle school science teacher in the state. She won $10,000 in a citation signed by the president. Mrs. Smith 
downplays her accomplishments and believes any of her Bach colleagues could have won the award. There is so much good going on in education and so many unbelievable teachers walk up and down this hallway right now here in the eighth grade building and pop into any classroom and you'll be amazed at what you see. A visit to the classroom and you may see projects like the egg drop competition. Mrs. Smith has her eighth grade physical science students creating parachutes and baskets to protect an egg. Three, two, one. Woo when dropped from a second floor walkway. What do you think guys, did it survive? Did it survive! It survived! You cannot teach science without having them get their hands on it. They have to get their hands on it and talk about it and um, problem solve. I think that she's a special teacher because she likes to get involved with the activities and she likes to have fun with it. So if you're having more fun, you're bound to pay attention more and you can learn more out of the process instead of just doing work to do work. Mrs. Smith, a good example of a district teacher providing effective and relevant instruction. Sure, she appreciates the presidential citation, but seeing the students progress is her real reward. They still love to learn. The light bulbs go off. They make me laugh every day. Um, it's a pleasure to come to work. Mrs. Smith has been a teacher for 27 years. Now she has the presidential seal of approval. Great job, Tracy. And some eggs were damaged in the taping <laughs> of that package. Guess it seems like it was inevitable. Yeah. Well, time now for a look at this week's community calendar. The Palm Beach County School District invites you to the annual college and career fair. More than 150 colleges, universities, trade schools, and the armed forces will have booths and plenty of information. Financial aid representatives will also be available. Join us Monday, October 24th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Expo Center at the South Florida Fairgrounds. A.W. Dreyfus School of the Arts invites you to its open house events. The first is for prospective students interested in communications, dance, digital media, theater, and visual arts. This takes place November 2nd from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. The second open house takes place on November 10th. This event is for students interested in band, piano, strings, or vocal. No reservations are required. Register now for the Heroes for Education 5K Run and Walk. This event takes place on November 12th at Bryant Park in Lake Worth. Register a team from your Palm Beach County Public School. The two top teams will each be awarded a physical education grant. Find out more by contacting the Education Foundation at www.educationfoundationpbc.org. If you have a good story to share or an event coming up, let us know. Email us at goodnews at palmbeachschools.org. And that wraps up this week's edition of Spotlight on Education, brought to you by the Education Network, keeping you informed.